Hello middle schoolers, my name is Brianna Banks and I'm going to give you a presentation on the male and female sexual anatomy in response. What is sexology? Sexology is the scientific study of human sexuality. It focuses on human reproduction, sexual rights and consent, sexual and gender diversity, sexual diversity, and population health responses to sexual health challenges. Human sexuality relates to the sexual sensation and related intimacy between human beings. Recent efforts and study of human sexuality have keyed in on study of love, sexual emotions, human relationships, human sexual response, criminal sexual behavior, sexual function, and sexual pleasure and fulfillment. And this information came from Health Sciences. What is a sexologist? A sexologist is a person who studies all areas of sex. This includes the anatomy, physiology, sexual orientation, and sexual development. A sexologist does further research to better understand human sexuality such as history, sociology, physiology, biology, gender studies, and more, all to get an understanding of how sex works in the situations of social, cultural, and religious environments. And this information came from the Art of Connection. Kinsey's Research Dr. Alfred Kinsey is thought to be the founder of sexology. Kinsey held private interviews with many people. He used the regularity of orgasm to measure sexuality. People were offended by Kinsey's work due to it being too explicit. Although since, since his work, there has been no research that has been as detailed as Kinsey's. And this came from Learn About Sexuality. And then to the right is Kinsey himself, and to the left is um, a picture of Kinsey giving um, a presentation about sexuality from the Kinsey movie. Ellis's research. Ellis is commonly acknowledged for the contributions he made towards the study of human sexuality and his support of sex education and women's rights. Ellis was writing during an era where the views of sex were changing because of an activist pushing for sexual equality and controlled reproduction. Studies in the, psycholo in the Psychology of Sex was a seven-volume series encyclopedia on human sexuality. He published this due to his interest in sexual behavior. This series is what Ellis is ultimately known for, and this came from Embryo. And then there, the top first picture is of Ellis, and then this is just a little glimpse of the studies in psychology of the sex. Reproductive and sexual anatomy. When it comes to one's reproductive and sexual anatomy, while everyone's is made up of the same material, everyone's looks different. Reproductive and sexual anatomy is made up of your genitals and your internal sex and reproductive organs. And this came from Plain Parenthood. The female anatomy. So here's just a video of the female anatomy. Oops. Female sexual anatomy. Like in the video, it will kind of go through everything of um, all the points of the makeup of all the female anatomy and where things are located. So here's just more in-depth detail of what the female anatomy consists of, where it's located, and what some of it looks like. So when most people refer to the vagina, they actually mean the vulva. The vulva is your genitals on the outside of your body. Mons pubis is the fleshly mound above your vulva, it cushions the pubic bone and is covered with pubic hair after puberty occurs. 
The labia is also known as lips. There are folds of skin around the vaginal openings. The labia majora is known as the outer lips. This consists of fleshy skin and is covered with pubic hair. The labia minora, known as the inner lips, this is located inside, inside the outer lips. It begins at your clitoris and ends under the opening to the vagina. The labia is different for everyone. It can have a shorter or longer side. There are some cases where one lip is longer than the other. One can have a larger outer lips than inner lips, or some can have larger inner lips than outer lips. The labia can vary in color. It can be pink to brownish black. The color of your labia can change as you get older. And this also still came from Planned Parenthood. The clitoris has thousands of nerve endings and is comprised of spongy tissue. The tip of the clitoris is covered by the clitoral hood and located at the top of your vulva. This is where your inner lips meet. Opening of the urethra is a little hole that one pees out of. It is located between the clitoris. Opening of the vagina is where menstrual bleeding takes place and where babies are born through. The vaginal opening is located right below the urethra opening. The hymen is in the thin tissue that stretches across the opening to the vagina. The hymen can vary in how much of the opening it covers. The anus is also known as the butthole. The anus is the opening to your rectum. And this all still is still coming from Planned Parenthood. The vagina is a tube that joins your vulva to the cervix and uterus. The cervix segregates the vagina and uterus. It is located between both the vagina and the uterus. The cervix is a hole that connects the, the uterus and the vagina. And the cervix is what divides the vagina from part of the body so things like tampons cannot get lost inside of a person. The uterus is shaped like a pear. The uterus is where the fetus grows and is also known as the womb. The endometrium is a mucous membrane that thickens during the menstrual cycle. This membrane lines the uterus. The ovaries is where one's eggs are stored. The ovaries are released in the ovaries release an egg every month. This starts during puberty. The ovaries produce hormones like estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. These hormones are responsible for things like one's period and pregnancy. The fallopian tubes can carry the eggs from the ovaries to the uterus. Sperm travels through these tubes to fertilize the egg. The fallopian tubes are two narrow tubes. At the end of these tubes are fimbrae. Fimbrae are finger-like projections to help pull the egg into the fallopian tubes. This is still coming from Planned Parenthood. The barthron's glands are located near a female's vaginal opening. When becoming turned on, fluids are released that lubricate your vagina. The skin's glands can be found on either side of the urethral openings. Fluids are released during the female ejaculation. Other names include the parourethral glands or female prostate glands. And this is still coming from Planned Parenthood. And here is just further um, in-depth um, diagram looks of the external parts. So the external parts again include the labia, the clitoris, the opening of the urethra, opening of the vagina, your anus, and mom's pubis. And the internal parts um, consist of the vagina, the cervix, the uterus, fallopian tubes, the fimbrae, ovaries, and then both the glands, the barotherium glands and the skin's glands the hymens, and the G-spot. And then this is a video that breaks down the male anatomy to kind of give you a better idea. And the video talks about all these points of the male sexual anatomy. So here's just a more detailed explanation of all the male anatomy what they do, where they're located, what they look like. 
So, the penis is comprised of three layers of spongy tissue. When a male is aroused, blood fills these tissues. This causes the penis to get harder and stand up. This is known as getting an erection. The penis is broken down into parts. The gland is the head of the penis, where here's where here you will find the opening of the urethra. P, precum, and semen come out of the urethra. The shaft is located from the head of the penis connecting to the lower the lower belly. The shaft looks like a long tube. The urethra is inside of the shaft. The V-shaped frenulum is the area where the foreskin meets underneath the penis. The foreskin is a patch of skin that covers the head of the penis. Some men are circumcised by a doctor at birth, getting the foreskin removed. The scrotum or ball sac holds the testicles in a sac below the penis. The scrotums have wrinkled skin and vary with hair. Size and color may also vary. The anus is also known as the butthole. The anus is the opening to your rectum. The corpora cavernosa is the spongy erectile tissue that contains the majority of the blood in the penis during erection. This came from Planned Parenthood. The testicles compose sperm and hormones. The testicles are also known as balls, where they look like two ball-sized glands inside the scrotum. The epididymis is a tube where your sperm matures. It connects each testicle to each vas deferens and holds your sperm before you ejaculate. A vas deferens is a long, narrow tube that carries sperm from the epididymis to the, semi, the seminal vesicles where you ejaculate. There are two of them, one connected to each epididymis. Seminal vesicles are two small organs that produce semen. The fluid that sperm moves around in, they're located below your belly, or they are located below your bladder. The prostate gland makes fluid that helps your sperm move. It's about the size of a walnut or golf ball. The prostate gland is sensitive to pressure or touch in a way that many people find pleasurable. The cowper's glands produce a fluid called pre-ejaculate or pre-cum. This fluid prepares your urethra for ejaculation. It reduces friction so your semen can move more easily. The cowper's glands glands are under the prostate and attached to your urethra. They are also called bulbourethral glands. The cremaster is a muscle that moves your scrotum and testicles closer to your body. This happens when you are cold, you are aroused, or when someone touches your inner thigh. Your, the urethra is the tube that carries urine, pre-ejaculate, and semen to your urethral opening and out of your body. Corpus spongiosum is sponge-like tissue that surrounds the inside of the urethra. Masters and Johnson's Model Masters and Johnson's observed in the laboratory men and women engaging in sexual activity. They took their research and published a book called Human Sexual Response. Master and Johnson's findings were valuable to women because this helped guide it women and gave them a better understanding towards their bodies. And this came from Our Bodies, Ourselves. Master and Johnson's model of sexual response in both males and females. The first phase of this model is excitement. In females, vasocongestion occurs. The clitoris, labia, menorah, and vagina begin to swell. The muscle that lines the vaginal opening begins to be tighter and the uterus grows in size. The vaginal walls start to become lubricated. In males, the penis becomes either partially erect or fully erect as it starts to be stimulated. Both testicles are pulled upwards to the perineum. This came from Wikipedia. The fourth phase. The fourth phase is a model. The fourth phase in this model is called the resolution phase. 
In females, Masters and Johnson say that women have the ability to orgasm quickly if they have good stimulation. They could even have multiple orgasms in a short time frame. It has been reported that women do not experience a refractory period. This results in another orgasm after the first. In males, there are two stages of decumacinum of the penis. In the first stage, the penis decreases from its erect state, but it's about 50% larger than its flaccid state. This is called refractory period. In the second stage, the penis decreases and returns to being flaccid. And again, this is from Wikipedia. The second phase. So the second phase of the model is called the platua phase. In females, during this phase, the clitoris is extremely sensitive. The bartholone glands produce lubrication. The pubococcygeus muscle becomes tighter, causing the opening of the vagina to decrease in diameter, while the tissue on the outer vagina start to swell. Masters and Johnson refer to the stage as the orgasmic plat platform. In males, the seminal fluid be might start to secrete or pre-ejaculatory fluid. The testicles move closer to the body. The muscles at the base have a rhythmic contraction and the urethral sphincter contracts. This prohibits any urine and semen mixing. And again, this came from Wikipedia. Third phase. The third phase is known as the orgasm phase. In females, the vaginal walls tighten and there is an increase in vaginal lubrication. The sensation is similar to males. All in all, this is, this is pleasurable for the female. In males, this phase is correlated with ejaculation. The first and second convulsions are typically the most intense when it comes to sensation. These convulsions produce the greatest quantity of semen. Therefore, each contraction is subsided with pleasure and a volume of semen. Again, from Wikipedia.